Hello everyone, my name is Chris. This is my new YouTube channel, FC.M Astrophotography. Uh, that's the focal ratio C.M, my initials. So it's good to have you, and I look forward to having this channel and sharing some of the things I've learned. I have a lot to learn about astrophotography, and I am by no means an expert but I'm having a, a very uh, good time in this hobby and I've really enjoyed watching a lot of the other videos I've seen online getting on AstroBin and looking at the various uh, pictures that are on there and again I very much enjoy this hobby and I'm sure you do also and I wanted to talk today about uh, astrophotography with a go-to Dobsonian telescope and there's not a lot of people doing that. I did do it a little bit. I've since moved on to a different astrophotography setup, but there are some other people online, and I wanted to show you some of my pictures, some of their pictures. And you can get pretty decent results. And you can also do electronic assisted astronomy, where you would use a camera as part of your astrophotography setup, or actually your real time setup, and you can display that on a computer screen in real time to the users as you look at various objects so you can do a little bit of visual and you can put a camera on your scope and you can bring it up on your screen and it's very enjoyable and you can do some longer exposures you can stack your images and get some really impressive results uh, just a little bit more about me before I talk about that um, I'm in my mid 40s now I in college had uh, my first telescope I got on one of my birthdays my first year at college it was a Celestron refractor I still have it downstairs in the basement and it was a very nice first telescope and I remember looking at Saturn the first time through it and it was it was a lot of fun it was a great joy and my second telescope that I had was this Mead Starfinder I don't have it anymore I had sold it I had found that this tripod was just too too cumbersome to move uh, or at least I thought at the time when I sold it and I wasn't really getting it out anymore and so so I did sell it and that was quite a few years ago um, probably 15 20 years ago is when I sold that and I just got back into the hobby a couple years ago and I decided I was going to get a Orion go-to Dobsonian telescope and this is the Orion it's the XX14G go-to trust tube and it's very nice in that you can take all this apart it comes apart in pieces you've got the top here with the secondary mirror here and the uh, inner portion of, of this this upper portion you've got the primary mirror down in the bottom this comes off the base and then this pedestal comes apart the sides come off completely and you're just left with this pedestal on their bottom so it's very manageable you can take it apart you can fit it in the car I've actually fit mine in the trunk of my Honda Accord we have a van now and, and even in my van I, I don't take it apart completely in the van I, I leave this pedestal completely um, connected uh, I don't take it apart I do take off um, the tube for the primary mirror the trusses in the top but I'm able to get this bottom pedestal in the van it's a Honda Odyssey with a little bit of help we can lift it right up here and I don't have to take the whole thing apart but you can take the whole thing apart and it's pretty easy to do so I just love this scope it's got go-to capability it works very good it also tracks also tracks which is really the the big benefit of having this scope and it does a really good job especially if you get nice and level you need to get the pedestal level and if you do that uh, you'll find that it tracks very well and, and you don't have to make very many adjustments over the course of a couple hours it stays pretty much on target so I just I have loved this scope it's 14 inches there's also a 16 inch version which is a little bit more expensive I decided not to get that um, I didn't want to pay the extra money and the 16 inches you know it's a little bit harder to to carry and to manage it's heavier so I thought the 14 inch was just right sometimes I wonder if I should have got the 16 inch but the 14 inches worked out really really well for me and I just I just love it I just love it it's fabulous scope um, so I wanted to talk a little bit more specifically this scope right here this Orion XX 14 G go to I've used it to take various astro images and I have 
a gallery here on Asterman and again I'm, I'm new to astrophotography uh, so I have a lot to learn my pictures aren't the best everyone gets a little bit better but this is my name here Chris Moran you can find me asterman.users uh, slash user slash CJ Moran and this picture here in particular you can see it's my profile picture I took this with this scope with this Orion XX14G on the banks of Lake Michigan up at Petoskey and we were up there for vacation uh, this was back in 2017 in June and it was just one sixteen second exposure and it's so dark up there uh, which was you know a huge benefit and it allowed me to get this exposure in 15 seconds and I know it's you know may not be impressive to some of you but being able to get a picture like this with your Dobsonian in real time I mean, to, to me, that's just fabulous, and uh, it, was, it was really good memory, and so that's why I have that as my profile picture. But you can see here, I started out, you know, the, re the results aren't very impressive, but again, this is just real time. This is a Dumbbell Nebula. This was with a Lodestar uh, times 2 c which is actually a guide scope, but it's very, very sensitive. And that's why I got it to do this electronic assisted astronomy. But the color is not very good at, at, at all. It doesn't have good color. <clears throat> you can see him. I, I had a little right here. I had a little bit more green in this exposure, but not too bad of a, a result with a dopsonium like this. This is just 10 five second exposures stacked up. So it was just in real time there. And I saved it. I've got some others here. Color's a little bit better on this one. This is the Ring Nebula. This is 54 five second sums, or five set, 54 five second exposures. And then I've got some others. I'll show you this one here. This is the Pinwheel. This is a 16 15 second exposures. Again, these are all with this Orion XX14G with the Lodestar times 2C and you can see here I've got the notes at the bottom Orion XX14G Starlight Express Lodestar X2C and then the software Starlight Express uh, Starlight Live and this is what the software looks like Starlight Live by Paul Shears and the histograms up here at the top when it's active you can adjust the the black level and the white level there's some other uh, contrast adjustments here some color modifiers so there's a image acquisition there's a dark frame acquisition you can acquire a dark uh, dark frames and <clears throat> excuse me it will it will apply those in real time to your image collection which is really nice there's a focus alignment here that you can use uh, to focus your telescope there's exposure control so what you do is you just hit this button and start exposure. You set the exposure time and you can loop if you want to on the exposures and you set your color space, your color matrix, the binning, different binning options with a color camera. If you if you bin two by two or greater, you're gonna get you're gonna get the monochrome. It's just gonna bin, bin in real time and you get the black and white. You can export your image. And then this is one of the best parts about the Starlight Live. It has a live stacking mode. Um, it's got different modes, some mean, median, some and mean, max pixel displacement. You can actually throw away images if they drift too much. Max, uh, full wave half, half max here that you can set. I believe that's what that stands for. And then it's got different filter options. But this Starlight Live, it's specifically used to be used with um the lodestar camera and i think there's another camera too by the same vendor i think it's ultra star maybe it's a little bit more expensive has higher resolution uh, i don't know if they make that one anymore or not but this is specifically what you would use for this uh lodestar for live stacking and i use that lodestar now as a guide scope in my in, in a newer uh astrophotography setup that i have but it works really great for eaa uh, astronomy so that's the pinwheel 
let's see here. I've got I've got another one here. This is the Spindle Galaxy. This is 20 15 second exposures. Not too bad for real time. I mean, not, it's, it's, it's not comparable at all to a good astrophoto, but for real time astronomy, for showing to the public, I think it's pretty neat. I've got some here, the Veil Nebula. Color's not not too good. This is part of the East Veil. And what's really neat about this, you might not be able to see this very well. Uh, this is uh, Stephen's Quintet, Stephen's Quintet. Uh, I'm not, not sure which way is the right way to pronounce that. Stephen, I believe. But when you're stacking with, with the Starlight Live software, you'll get a first exposure and then you'll get one after another that'll stack if they're accepted and you'll see the brightness of this image increase gradually over time and eventually um, the, the details start to pop up on, uh, pop out on you and I think that's all I'm going to show you of those now I did want to show you there's another gentleman he's also on Astrobin and he has an Orion XX16G. So he's got the 16-inch version of the scope that I have. And this is his name, Lowenthalm, L-O-W-E-N-T-H-A-L-M. I don't know what his first name is. Um, I've actually messaged him a couple times. I can't remember. Um, but he's got some really impressive images here for just taking with his this Orion GoTo Dobsonian. And you can see here that his results were very similar t to mine um, when he started out here. But you can see with time how his images have gotten better and better. Here's one here of the Dumbbell Nebula. You know, not too bad with the scope. Let me see what else he's got here. Dumbbell. So see the Cigar Galaxy. You can see it's his color and his processing is getting better. Um, the more present we get, this is the Skull Nebula. And it, you know, it's almost tempting. You know, why not just stick with astrophotography with a Dobsonian? Well, you can. Your results won't be quite as good, but you can see here, this is NGC 1514. I think this is a crystal ball nebula. Now, in his later image, his images here, he has, like I said, he's got this Orion SkyQuest XX16G. He's got the ASI 294MC, the ZWO camera. Um, I have that now as well. Uh, I've only used it a couple times with my Dubsonian, but it made a big difference, I think, in his exposures and his pictures. And they're starting to look really, really good. Um, he's getting much better results than some others I've seen that have, you know, more traditional equatorial type of astrophotography set up. Here's a pretty good one, NGC 891. And... Let me get one of the more recent ones here. Okay, he's got the ring nebula. Oh, and this is, uh, you can start to see the outer halo on this. I know you probably can't see it on your screen. Um, but again, that's, that's a really good result with this Dobsonian. He's even got this IC1296 here in the background. So in this case, let's see, he's got 1,082 two second frames so that's a lot of exposures right all my a lot of my exposures well in some cases with the same camera he's using i was using one second but he's got two second exposures he's got 1082 exposures and he uses sharp cap it says here uh, he's got a coma corrector you will need a coma corrector with with this scope with the 14 or the 16 um, on the outer edges He's got some other filters he's using here, a light pollution filter. Because I believe he lives, he lives in Vancouver on the city limits, I believe. But this is just really good result, again, with a Dobsonian, a go-to Dobsonian. It tracks, but when it tracks, of course, it, it steps. It doesn't, you know, it's not a motion, um, an equatorial type motion in RA. It's, it's just stepping in alt-as. 
is what these scopes do. He's got some pictures here of the Whirlpool. I mean, look at that. Again, with the Dobsonian. Excellent. And the 294MC camera. You know, it just makes me want to get my Dobsonian out and uh, go take some pictures. Here's He's got a really small planetary NGC 7027. This is uh, one of his more recent pictures. Um, but I recommend go out and check out this uh, this gentleman's website again. It's l o w e n t h a l m, or it's astroben.com slash user slash l o w e n t h a l m, and you can look at some of mine too. Mine aren't as impressive as his. Um, I do have a couple others that I've taken a little bit more recently. Um, Processing is not the best on this one. This is M82 with my XX14G. And you can see some of the tendrils in here in the middle. This was, okay, 1,800 one-second exposure. So, if, you know, if you're going to do this, you need a lot of memory, a computer with a lot of horsepower, uh, well, memory to be able to store these images. But then you have to process all of them. And that takes quite a bit of time, so that's the disadvantage of, of using this method here. But not a bad result with a Dobsonian. Um, here's M81. This didn't come out too bad. Uh, this is just uh, in, in monochrome. I don't remember if this was binned or I just didn't, um, I didn't convert it to color, I think is, is what happened. This was a little experiment. Um, so this was 3,000 one-second exposure, but 0.8 hours. Um, on my scope, I don't remember what. It's an F4, F4 something or other for that XX14G. So it's pretty fast. Uh, but again, another example of, of the type of result you can get if you're willing to process all those images. But... Um, Less time out in the field collecting the images, I suppose. And I think that's all I wanted to share with you this evening. So, again, I have a lot to learn, a lot to learn, but uh, I greatly enjoy this hobby. I look forward to learning more about it, uh, to continue to work with all of you and doing a better job at processing images. And it's a wonderful hobby and um, really blessed to, to be able to, to have some of this equipment and to use it and to go out and, and look at the stars in the sky. Really, really neat stuff. So thanks for your time, and I look forward to, uh, to talking to you more in the future. Thanks a lot.